Yeah, here we are. It's Rust, the game we all know and love and love to hate. We all know the score, but hey, one day I was browsing around Google and doing my little internet thing when I came across an interesting article on the Face Punch website. Rust Hardcore Mode. Now, if you've been living under a rock or if you just simply do not care, Rust Hardcore Mode came out this month and what they did was make Rust even harder for little solo players like myself. As you can see, they removed map, which is one of the biggest things. They removed team UI and a whole host of other things, which really makes Rust want to fuck you in the ass even harder if you are a little solo player. So I thought to myself, how can I make my life even worse this month? I decided to play Rust Hardcore Mode as a solo for 30 days straight. That is 30 times of the sun going down and up and up and down. And I did the maths, it's roughly 25 hours of gameplay. And, well, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, enjoy the video. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, if not a dislike. And if you have a moment, leave a comment. It can be anything. Just say hi. Enjoy the video. Ah. Can you smell that? That smells like self-loathing. So day one really was just spent getting to grips with the whole new game mode, running around and running away from this lovely fellow here. And now that I'm learning as I am future Ben here talking to you instead of past Ben, hi from the future. Um, I'm learning that because of my stupid VR headset addiction recently, that there is actually no sound for the first up five days of this video. Don't fret, it's not very long. Thank you, past Ben, spending his life on the VR headset. Ben! But like I say, day one was spent getting to grips, and soon enough I died and to a wolf, no less. That was super fun. I then found myself an interesting new area as I respawned, as you don't get bags and you don't get maps, so I completely forgot where I had died. Hey look, a supermarket. I found myself a lovely cool new area with a supermarket. I thought this was quite promising because there was good resources here and obviously a supermarket is pretty important with the recycler. I went inside to have a look and met my death face on with an arrow. Good times. <sighs> I hate my life. I think this is what this is just gonna be. It's just a montage of me dying. All right, I've actually managed to get myself some, uh, some tools here. I've got a hatchet, so I'm gonna get this tree. Still day one, things were looking up, I had myself some tools and I'd managed to get almost a full tree before I was hunted down and killed by someone with a bow. This is going really well, I said to myself. This is going absolutely terribly so far, Ben. Well done. Gonna shove all these pumpkins and corn in my pocket while I can before I get killed again. I had found a river. This was pretty crucial as it allowed me to get to full HP and fill my little pockets with snacks just in case I'd need them down the road. By now I'd made myself a bow and I'd found quite an interesting area with a stables and an entrance to the underground tunnels which I thought was quite promising and a lighthouse way out in the sea that I would not be bothered to go to. Yeah, I am not swimming to that. Day two now and I had set to building my little two by one base in my fun little area. I had found lots of stone and that enabled me to build my two by one with not much problems. But then I heard myself a ruckus and went to investigate. Turns out the ruckus was in fact a trap base that almost killed me with a turret. So I left that and went to the underground tunnels. Not much to talk about down here. It was mostly empty and there wasn't much good loot as it had already been looted. Day three, I went myself back into the tunnels. This time, there was a good amount of loot. However, I died, then died again, then died again, then rage quit, then realized I needed to get on to make wood for my upkeep, so I logged straight back in. I was loving myself. Of course, a pig is killing me just as I log back in after I rage quit. I hate this game. So, in celebration, I decided to drown myself and then contemplate why I even started doing this. Then I ran straight into a science yeah, man, on, science and you guessed it, me. dead again. Oh, great. Go on, yeah, finish me off. What a day. What a day. Day four, really wasn't anything special. I spent the time just putting doors on my base, getting furnaces together, and then spent the rest of it rage AFK. 
day five starts off great because one, we have audio, and two, I was raided, offline raided as I slept overnight in real life. So I had locked back on this time towards the desert. I had ran inland and I met a lovely man. Oh, hello there, bro. How are you going today, huh? Hello, man. Oh, hello, bro. Yeah, look at this. There is nothing in here. Oh, hey, he then died. My new, more geared friend then died to another newer, more geared Hi, bro, chill. person. And then chill. I looted his corpse and ran Thank away. You. Mind you, I didn't get too far because just outside of the fishing village, for me and my new little friend, was a little surprise. Oh shit. Okay, well... <laughs> day 6 and day 7 were spent on the respawn screen because I decided to go and have a bath to see if that would calm my rage for all of the unlucky things that are happening to me. It did not. We go again. Day break on day 8. And we go again, just like I said. I had respawned at a bag I'd placed in the desert just before I got compound bow to the face and thought I might try and make a start here in the desert. I'm not sure why, it just felt like home. Perhaps it's all the death. Anyway, this is when my luck actually began to turn. Ooh, I need that. Now I can get cloth in this wasteland. I don't know why I'm deciding to build here. Something about it just feels right, you know? When that happens in rats, you gotta trust your instinct. Or you'll die. It's one or the other. Then, a few seconds down the road, I'd found myself a lovely decaying base. Oh, the interior's about to go. This is big. This could decay for some loot. If you don't play Rust, this is a welcome sight for sore eyes, and right now, mine was sorer than ever. So there they be. So to me, this was here. looking like a banquet dinner with some revitalizing eye drops. I'm gonna bang a base down right next to this, a two by one, just like my last one. Hopefully this won't get raided, so I can wait for this to fall. So I decided to put a two by one down next to it so I could wait for it to decay and scoop up all the juicy loot that may be inside it. But before I could even do that, the walls came down. Oh, it's decayed already. Just one of the walls. What we got? Some metal. Love that. Big time. No scrap. Oh, they're asleep there. Please have guns. Ooh. Okay. Crossbow. Beggars can't be choosers, Ben. Beggars can't be choosers. Okay, armor. A nail gun's always welcome, to be fair. What about Mr. Spaceman here? Nope. 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 Hello. Oh, great. A guitar. I will play guitar to them to death. Decent component, though. Can't be mad. Right, I'm gonna put my two by one down, I think. So, that is exactly what I did. Two by one went up and secured out of wood to begin with, but this would soon change. And what else was going to change quicker than I thought was the area. As soon as I put down my two by one, I had discovered some not so friendly and really annoying new neighbors. Oh shit, there's two of them. I may have done screwed up here. I think these guys live near here. I think I saw them earlier, fossils farming. I'm gonna run all this stuff inside, because I have a lot on me. And then I'll fight them. One dead. Should just be one more. Oh yeah, there he is. You little ripper. Two hits. Should be close. 
Oh, he's run at me. Okay. Just for the gear. Oh, maybe they don't live here. I thought they might. But they really have nothing. And today is breaking news that no one saw coming. They are now door camping me. No, you're out there, mate. Why are you door camping me like? Open the door and hands up bro. No. I was willing to wait them out and kill them one by one, but the universe had other plans. The walls on the decayed base right in front had just gone down, forcing me to run out. Oh shit. I think, I haven't heard them come back, but I think we got the good stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if one of them made off with anything else, but it doesn't look that way. I think we did it, and just in time for day nine, as the sun sets on day eight. Wow, that was quite intense for a little prim battle. That was fun. GG boys. I upgraded my base and all that too, just so they can't come back and like start sorting me to death, but I do need to get some metal doors on. That'll be a job for day nine. The sun rose on day nine, and this one started outside as I was already out there farming. And a few notable things, but not much else, happened this day. One of which was a lovely jump scare, and the other of which was finding a revolver. This was pretty key to my progression here, Goodness as gracious. I was going to need it as people started getting better and better weapons. This was quite a big find, and of course, I added those metal doors I was talking about. Goodness. Day 9 rounded off by getting absolutely beamed from like 200 meters away with what I could only assume was a laser. And then day 10 rolled around and I spent most of it just reorganizing my loot and then the rest of it AFK. I was probably eating. 
Day 11 rolled around and I returned to being dead from hunger and then a ruckus brewed, so I went to check it out. I have arrived at the ruckus. It would appear that this base is getting raided actually by a guy with an AK, I think. So I had arrived at a base down the hill from me that was being raided by a man with a Tommy and an AK. There wasn't much I could do here as I only had a crossbow, so all I could do was annoy them. So I headed home to make a plan. I could land the wall real quick. I got this <laughs> oh my Christ! Bro, pick me up. We can do this together. Kill him! Kill him! I need that pumpy! Asshole. The pumpy man had thrown a wrench into my plans, but no worries, he wouldn't be around much longer as he got absolutely roasted by the guys inside the base, as you just saw. So I decided to head over myself and see if I could get anything at all out of this. But of course, before I did that, I need something with bigger punch, so I decided to learn the revolver that I found along with a pistol bullet. This would help me achieve my goal of killing someone with something better than an arrow. Take it off in a hot air balloon. was unexpected, but welcome, I suppose. Might be able to use these shotguns to go deep on this raid. Well, I hung them out in there, but they just left, and there was about, I don't know, it sounded like there was four of them, but I only saw two of them getting in the boat, I don't know. It's weird, but we got some good stuff out of that. I'm not mad. Day 11 wrapped up very nicely as I found a satchel, and here in my notebook it just says, cactus, question mark, so I assume I was talking about chopping up cacti to get cloth from the desert, which I clearly did here, as I'm using cloth for bandages and for food. So that's great. Day 12. Huh? Day 12, yes, I remember it very well. It began with this very confusing fight as I was so confused because they were running around naked when I first saw them and then threw on their kits as they saw me and proceeded to kill me with an M92. I have written here recycle question mark so day 12 clearly is no easier to decipher for me. I assume that I wanted to recycle but I clearly got sidetracked with this fight. As you saw me I took a big L and then an what? even bigger L. I gave my brain a rest and decided to look for supermarket, which I eventually found that was like really close to my base as it turns out. I then used the recycler, which was huge, and then learnt fire arrow. I then used said fire arrows to take out a TC I'd seen to mostly gain access to the tier 2, but also to try my luck at anything in the TC. Also at this point, I think I was beginning to lose my mind. Alright, time to blow this down with arrows. Oh, really? Oh, 
Damn. Fine, I guess. Day 13 was AFK because I took my girlfriend to the train station and day 14 an airdrop came down in the skies near my base so I decided to try my hand at that. Is an airdrop coming down? I'ma go try and get it. So that was unfortunate, and then in my notebook here, all I have written is uh, an unhappy face on MP5. I'll be honest, I don't remember why, so I'll watch this and find out. Mums has got guns around here. MP5! Day 15 was spent tabbed out eating a rage induced lunch. And then day 16, I came back feeling refreshed, did some farming, and got shot in the head while doing so with my yummy new jackhammer. And then had to fight my way out of a door camper situation. Who the frick is shooting at me? Go away. Why are you door camping me, mate? Ow! You also may notice something odd about my base, and my tier 2 is missing. I picked this up because as these guys were door camping me, and I knew they were out there before I even opened the door, I didn't want them to get any ideas about sticking around or raiding me, so I moved that out of the way so they didn't think I was rich. That was an IQ? I think so. Let's go, boy. Hi. Why are you door camping me? Well, they eventually left, which was really cool. And the sun eventually set just in time for day 17 and for a new day in real life. A day in real life and in Rust started very slow. All I did was look around and get a good grasp of the area, see if anything had changed, get up to a bit of shenanigans and build my base a little bit more from a 2x1 into what I wanted it to finally be. Day 18 came around and was mostly uneventful, apart from me going exploring, me getting severely outplayed, Ну ты, конечно, жесткий. 
and quite a lucky find. just here open oh won't complain day 19 rolled around and it started in the middle of the night which caused me to get lost outside this base and have to wait for the sun to come up once it did i managed to find the base again get in grab all the best stuff and run all of that home so i had secured everything that i just found i then learnt myself med syringe so i was able to craft some of those then I took myself roaming and stumbled into a lovely little fight just outside of military tunnels. What's all this then? Oh, bean can, that's huge. I actually need that because I have satchel, not bean can, so let's get that home. I then almost had my heart stop. And then to round day 19 off, I told myself honestly of my current position. I won't lie, I've got a lot of stuff. All kind of shit. Oh my god. Oh my god, bullets. Give me bullets. Fuck! Oh, he was right there. I thought it was a shadow. Oh. Day 20 was a sadness AFK and disconnect. Day 21 was a lot more eventful. I learnt myself bean can and satchel and then straight after that I decided to build up my base a little bit more to try and get it into its final form and then right after that I had to kill a few guys who came to my doorstep. Oh fuck off man.
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He just hit me for. I th I'm. I'm not dead. I then did a very wee little recycle run and logged off, and that's when day 22 came. This clearly started with some disappointment, which we are no strangers to here because I just have written down in my notebook an unhappy face. But alas, I got an opportunity at revenge. One which was well taken and well earned. But Russ in true fashion reminded me not to have too much fun. And this is when, pun intended, the bad luck train entered the station once more for me. Right, I've got my jackhammer here. I just need to farm a bit of upkeep. That's it. Okay, now I'm gonna die to a train! Don't do it. Yeah, I'm gonna die. He's jumping off. Well, fuck you, guy. Get away quick enough. No way he left everything and took the jackhammer, bro. No way. But in true fashion, Rust pulled me straight back in whilst out on a farming run. Okay. I then decided to go for a very risky recycle with pretty much all of my recyclable components to the nearby recycler, one which was seemingly guarded by a clan 24-7. This was not a good idea. But somehow, and probably not so surprisingly, my nighttime ratting paid off and the recycle run was a success, leaving me with 750 scrap to head my way down the trek tree to try and get myself to semi-automatic rifle. Day 23 and I went to check on my neighbor's base but he was in there so I thought that was pretty pointless so I left, learnt myself semi-automatic pistol and spent the rest of the day as a farmer. What a peaceful life this could be. So simple. No annoying gunfights, no annoying deaths, just corn and pumpkins. Maybe this is what I should do forever. It's dark! Day 24 started off very dark, but I learnt myself ladder. I then farmed some wood, I snuck into a compound. <laughs> I just didn't see it. Apparently got confused. What the fuck? Why has he got a bow and Tommy? I did a flame raid. Then of course died. I rushed as quick as I could to get back to the flame raid to finish off that one last wooden door, but by the time I got there it was too late and he had already replaced the wood door that I destroyed with a metal one. We exchanged some fire and then I went home. The sun set and day 25 came. I cooked up all my sulfur and prepared for the raid. I decided I was gonna do it at night time. I then died at night time. Oh, God, I just want once. I 
I then questioned my life choices. I'm honestly, I'm coming to my wits fucking end with this game. Then it was day 26 and it was time to do my online raid on the 2 by one that I lived next to. Surely this went well, right? It's a two by one. This is as easy as Russ gets. There's no way. There's no way this doesn't go my way. This has to. I need this win. Otherwise, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna cry and probably delete Russ forever. Tommy, this is going good so far. Let's hope we have some more meds. Oh, nice. Need that cloth too. Tommy's big. Oh, by the way, I'm banking on the, him. Uh, I just thought, like, I'm banking wholly on him not having a wooden door behind this. No, he doesn't. He's got a metal door. Crap. You know what? I don't care. I don't care. I'm taking this home. Tommy's a huge win. Base is right there. Oh no, I didn't see him. <sighs> Once again, I lay in the unwelcome arms of defeat. Solo rust can really grind you down, but don't worry, you know what's right around the corner? Day 27. And guess what? I got door camped. Great, now I'm being door camped. Cheers, and around bro. after that, I rage quit. <laughs> so day 28 was a short one for me. I farmed up keep and I got off. Day 29 though, oh boy. Oh yes, day 29 started off with quite a bang. I had found myself a large decaying clan base, and in between me and seemingly greatness was one auto turret. I had gotten a little bit of stuff from here, but all I needed to do was make two satchels and come back and blow that thing and get riches. This was the come up that I was looking for, I was waiting for, and that I deserved. I had been trundled through just shit this whole wipe and I really wanted a win, and this, to me, was that win. So, I started work on making enough satchels to blow that, and on my travels, I ended up at supermarket. That is when I ran into two lovely people.
I don't know really what's going on here, but I'm just going to roll with it. Kill one of them. Maybe I can go deep. open then. I wouldn't be able to get fully in, but I might have been able to go deep. Oh well. I had missed my slim opportunity at going deep, but I hung around and killed them a couple more times, and then I left. I farmed up the rest of the sulfur that I needed to get my way to blasting down that turret, and then I recycled. But I unfortunately died at the Recycler thanks to the clan that lives there and camps it. And here it was, as many people in their 20s are scared of, the big 3-0. Day 30 had arrived, and I had fallen short of pretty much every goal I could think of this wipe. I had been pounded into the ground by everyone and everything possible that Russ could throw at me, especially hardcore. But it was about time. My satchels were almost done cooking, and I headed over to see if I could grab anything and if anything had fallen down. This was my time. Now was the time I was going to get the loot I deserved. The loot I wanted, the loot I needed, but more importantly, the loot I damn deserved. Okay, I'd been through so much to get here, and I could taste it. I could taste victory in my mouth. And I was really close. All I had to do was survive the run over there. I had made it. A few more walls had fallen, but nothing to expose anything of value except a couple of turrets that I could dodge my way by. Unfortunately, the innards were still secured by the turret, so I was going to need those satchels if I was going to progress. I was so down bad on cloth at this point, I had to go out and hit every cactus I could see just to get enough to make the stashes for the satchels. That's right, I was poor. I was putting everything into this I could, and it was time. I had my satchels done, so over I went, in hopes to find glory. And I could see the rust gods were finally smiling on me because their hemp base had decayed, and I got the cl exactly the cloth that I needed to finish this raid should I need more cloth. Things were going well. A turret almost took me out of my splendor, but I managed to dodge it and go and hide the stuff on the beach. There had been no one around this area, no signs of life, no audible signs of life, nothing. All that was time for now was for me to enter the compound with my three satchels, blow the turret and get everything I deserved. Oh. Oh, fuck's sake. Except the fact that there was someone just crouched there game. looking at the entranceway, didn't make a single noise the whole time I was all around it, didn't move, and blended so well into the door that I didn't see him and he made me jump so I couldn't hit him. Nice one, dude. But don't worry, I went back. On the back foot, I poured what I could into a new semi-pistol, bullets, and I took my slug shotgun as well, and the last of the meds that I could make, and I headed straight back and tried to kill him. Just sat there. But uh, he was just sat there. What looked to be what AFK, the then tapped back in and managed to kill me with like three headshots. I don't what? know. I, I don't know. What, but I, I just don't know. He's just but don't chilling. worry. I went back, threw on what I could, grabbed grenades as I thought these would be a great idea to try and kill him, and went straight there. Oh shit. <sighs> Ah! <laughs> uh, I'm done. I'm done. I am done. That's it. I'm giving away my base. And well, that was it. That was my 30 days. Hugely anticlimactic for myself and frustrating and saddening, but altogether, I think fun, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully entertaining for you at least. I gave my base away to two lovely people who got raided just a couple hours before. So hopefully I could give them a better start and hopefully a slingshot on their way to success. I don't know. It was a tough one. Hardcore's fun. It's 
very difficult, at least for me. Cause see, I haven't played much like uh, recently, so it was tough to get back in the swing of things. And rather harsh on myself to join like a 300 pop server um, for my first time back in a couple of weeks and on hardcore mode. But hey, it was fun. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, leave a like. If not a dislike, if you're new around here. The subscribe and I'd appreciate it and if you have a moment please do leave a comment it really does help the channel it can be anything just just type I don't know just type donkey it's up to you but thank you so much for watching guys take it easy peace Where